all the way in Australia. She didn't come straight from Australia to join us here, but that's where she hails from. She's the great, the undefeated Sky Nicholson. Hello, Sky. How are Hello. you? Hello. I'm nice good. How are you? you? Nice person. to meet you. How are you? Good Welcome. Day. Have a seat. Thank you. Is that Paul? Hello, Paul. How are you, my friend? <laughs> this is great. Wow, look at this. This is what we call a cheap pop. Do you know what a cheap pop is in it's the world of pop. pro wrestling? Like when the pro wrestlers come to a town and they say, like, go Knicks, because yeah. they know the crowd is going to go nuts. You wear the Knicks gear, That's I'm me. assuming, because I'm a big Knicks fan. Is that why? Or That's not why. because we're in New York? That's a cheap no. pop. <laughs> um, New York support me when I come out here, so I support New York. Yes, I love it. It's Thank great you. gear. Well done. Thank you. Jordan as well, yeah, looking good. Love uh, second time in New York for you? Second time in New York. Not as a visitor, but as a fighter. Yeah, second fight here. Yeah, yeah. April 30th last year mm -hmm. was the first time. That was the Taylor Serrano card. There's a yeah. little uh, memento there. <laughs> now you're back. Um, and prior to that fight, you had just debuted, right, in March of 2022. Yeah, yeah. Did you expect year one? So you're 5-0, and oh, for those that don't know, uh, as a pro. You had like 100 and something. 150, just under. Insane amount of amateur fights. Yeah. You were in the Olympics in uh, 2021, the 2020 mm -hmm. Games. We yeah. shall talk about all this. Mm -hmm. You won the Commonwealth, uh, Gold Coast Commonwealth Games 2018. You got gold medal in that. Well done. I'm Thank a big you. fan of the Commonwealth as a Canadian, right? Yep. Um, and now you're 5-0 going for 6-0 and against Tanya Alvarez. And you're fighting for something called the Silver Featherweight title of yeah, the WBC. WBC what the hell is the Silver Featherweight title? It's basically the title before the world title. The title before the world title. Yeah. So this is the one that gets you... Yeah, this really. is going to get us that bit closer. So Confer Like 100%? Is it like a mandatory thing? It's it, It'll put me into probably the top three in the WBC. Okay. Um, and then they'll probably need to be uh, a final eliminator and then hopefully be mandatory. Okay. So this is a big deal. Yeah. So the question that I had was when it started in March of last year, mm -hmm. did you think you were going to be A, this busy? <laughs> and not only busy, you fought back home in Australia, MSG, back here in New York City. Like they're putting you on some big cards. In the UK as well. Yes. Did you think it would go like this or is this bigger than you thought so far? Um, it's kind of gone exactly to plan. Okay. We, we definitely did plan to be very busy. Uh, obviously signing with Matchroom, I knew that I would be able to box around the world, which is exactly what I wanted. Uh, and yeah, they really delivered on that. So um, no, I had an amazing first year and well, it still is my first year. Right. Um, but yeah, the first 11 months, it's been, yeah, it's been incredible. Uh, I, I saw an interview that you did after the Olympics. So this was kind of like post-summer 2021. Mm -hmm. And at the time you said you weren't interested in going <laughs> pro because your big desire was to go for the 2024 games. Now the rules have changed a little bit, but it mm -hmm. seemed like you wanted to stay as an amateur so that you could focus 100% on the Olympics. Ultimately, why did you decide to go pro? Yeah, I as soon as I finished the Olympics, um, obviously very narrowly missing out on a, a podium finish, um, potentially a gold medal, uh, my automatic thing was Paris 2024. So I was very ingrained in the amateur system. It was like my whole end goal had always been the Olympic gold medal. So um, just falling short, it was just this automatic thing for me that, okay, Paris 2024, let's go. And um, yeah, I didn't really ever have much interest in turning pro. I, I didn't really watch professional boxing. Um, really? Yeah. As a fan? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I just, I watched like Katie Taylor, obviously, um, right. a few of the other big names, but for the most part, like I wasn't really that into professional boxing. I never really saw myself doing it. Um, and yeah, I met my manager first, actually, Paul. The great Paul Reddy. Yeah. Yes. Um, he reached out pretty much straight after the Olympics, um, asking me what my plans were. Um, and I told him the same thing, not really interested in turning pro. Uh, and he said, well, that's cool. We'll stay in touch and, and maybe talk after Paris. And um, we stayed in touch anyway for the next like few weeks after that. And I had uh, a few offers start coming out from managements, from promoters. Uh, and then Eddie reached out as well. And I kind of, I was open to the conversation with everyone. So I, I entertained the idea of it, um, but kind of knew in the back of my mind, it wasn't really what I wanted to do. Um, so... Yeah, I ended up, I had a Zoom with Eddie uh, maybe about a month after the Olympics and I said the same thing to him. I was like, I'm not really interested in turning professional, but I'm, I'm open to the conversation if you want to talk about it. Uh, and he's a good salesman. Mm. Um, he's good at his job. And 
sold me the dream, um, but I was still a bit like on the fence about it. I wasn't 100% sure. Uh, but then obviously the rule change as well um, made it a little bit easier for me because uh, I knew that if I wanted to go back to the Olympics, I could. Um, if I wanted to go back to the amateurs and, and still go down that path, um, I had that option. So uh, I was in the UK with the Australian team training for an amateur tournament when I actually met with Paul, met with Eddie and, um, yeah, ended up signing with Matchroom and a year later, here we are. So was there any part of you that thought you would never go pro? Yeah. And what would you do after that? Like, what would you do after your amateur career? I, I, I've never boxed for for it to be my career. Really? Yeah. I just boxed because I loved boxing and I loved winning. Um, my goal was never to make it my job or my career. Um, yeah, I, I did it because I loved it. I wanted, I loved winning medals and representing my country. And it was never, yeah, it's never really been about money for me. But at some point you have to earn a living, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what was the plan? Like, what was your job going to be? I was be? like going to university and everything. So um, I was... I was always interested in journalism and really? uh, media, yeah, that kind of thing, which is why I love doing like commentary right, and working you punditry. Right, zone, yes. Um, but Did you study journalism? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but I, I just honestly, I never saw boxing being an option as a career for me. Um, so obviously like now I'm like, wow, I'm actually living the dream because I'm doing something that I just do because I love it um, and I'm getting paid for it. Yeah, and so a year in... Do you like the life as a person who earns money off of boxing? Yeah. Okay. I'm loving it. So you've changed your stance. Now. I have. Okay. I have. How soon did that happen? I mean, I'm still doing what I love, but now I'm getting paid for it as well. So it's it's a win-win really yeah. for me. Feels like a no you don't often hear that from someone who's in the amateurs. Like you'd think that eventually they all want to go. It's like yeah. here in MMA, college wrestlers or university, uh, I should say, Olympic wrestlers, for the longest time, they couldn't do anything after. Now mm -hmm. they can, can transition to MMA, even though it's not, you know, exactly. But they also had to come to terms with the fact that, like, this is going to end at some point. For you, you had that next thing, and you just didn't want to. I don't feel like you hear that often from an amateur or from an Olympian. Yeah, I think, like, even when I first started boxing, uh, female boxing wasn't even in the Olympics. That's true. So at that time, I was literally just doing it because I loved it. Um, I'm a competitive person and I like being the best. I just wanted to win all the time. So then when it was introduced into the Olympics, I was 17. And that was when I realized that was my dream. That's what I wanted to do. Um, and that that could be me in a few years time. And, and then I guess it was the same with the pro stuff. It was like, I realized a new dream that I didn't even know I had. Mm. Um, and now I'm living it. Now, what is the, uh, the state of this rule? Because now... Is it no longer the case that you can go back? What is going on here? Yeah, you can. You can? Yeah. What has to happen, though? Nothing. Like, can you just decide? Literally any professional fighter can go back and Even one, and like, box. could, like, Terrence Crawford yeah. go? Really? Yeah. Wow, they just opened the floodgates. Yeah. So it's sort of like basketball, right? How the NBA mm -hmm. guys can exactly. go? Exactly. That wasn't always the, the tennis, case? tennis, everything. It's, ah. yeah, it's kind wow. of... Is this the first year? Is 2024 the first time? I think they could in 2020. Okay. But not many do it. Okay. And not many, not many are really interested in doing it. And at the time I didn't really understand that, but I do see now why boxers wouldn't. Um, why not? It's different. Okay. It's really different. Um, it's been a big year of learning. Okay. Um, like you mean the rules, the whole thing? Yeah. yeah. So obviously in the Olympics Scoring. you're boxing three, three minute rounds. Right. Um, whereas now I'm boxing 10, two minute rounds. So the pace is different. Um, the training's different. The scoring's different. Mm. Um, yeah. So while it is boxing and boxing, it's it's quite different. But uh, I think it would be more different for men going from three threes to 12 threes. Okay. Then three threes to 10 twos. Right. Um, I feel like it, the change wouldn't be as dramatic for a female fighter. But I do, I do see why boxers opt not to do it. So have you decided whether or not you're going to go for 2024? I'm quite on the fence. I really want to. I feel like I have unfinished business with the Olympics. Um, but at the same time, this is going to be a huge year for me. This upcoming um, year. This upcoming and this year. Have to and this is also the qualifying right. year for the Olympics. So When does it start? In the second half of this year. Second half of 2023. Yeah. So you have to decide relatively soon. Yeah. Like how soon? Probably in the next month or so. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Very soon. Are you leaning in a certain direction? Um. 
it's hard because I feel like to win an Olympic gold medal, you have to be all in. Mm -hmm. To be a world champion or an undisputed world champion or multiple weight world champion as a professional, you need to be all in. So I think I need to decide which way I want to go and go with it 100%. I can't dip between the two and say I'll have a pro fight here and then I'll go and qualify and then I'll go have another pro fight and then I'll go back for the Olympics. So, um, yeah, I have some big decisions to make. Okay. But I'm quite on the fence at the moment. Uh, I think it depends on a lot of things. But Eddie probably wants you to stay on this side of the fence, right? I would say so, but at the same time, he knew when I signed that um, that was my dream. And he also was excited at the fact that I could potentially go and win a world title and then go back to the Olympics, win the Olympic gold medal, come back to the pros. It's something right. that's never been done before as yeah. well. So For men or women, right? Yeah. Man, that would be a big deal. Yeah. I feel like you'd get a lot of attention. Yeah, it would be huge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, I have to be honest, and I'm sorry to say this, the first time I saw you was not your best moment. It was when you were at the podium after losing in the Olympics and you were very, very emotional. And that clip kind of went all over the place, if only because yeah. you were so emotional, but it wasn't because people were mocking you. It was just like, you know, it was so heartbreaking yeah. to see someone that emotional. Um, you can hardly even speak. I think you didn't even want to talk to the Australian yeah. media, right? Like you fought it. <laughs> I didn't want to, no. Right. Could you take us back to that? Yeah. Uh, you make it to the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. No one has ever won a medal, right? As mm -hmm. far as uh, an Australian boxer. And female boxer. Female yeah. boxer, right? But we hadn't even won a medal, male or female, for about 30-something years as well. Wow. So. And you you think you won, right? Yeah. And uh, you find out via judges' scorecards you, you lose. Yeah. What's going on in your mind? I mean, I've never actually come out and said that I thought I won. Uh, it was a very close competitive fight. Um, you have three three-minute rounds to convince five people that you did more than they did in that very short time. Um, three judges decided she did it by one point. Two judges decided that I did it yeah. one by one point, one by two points. So um, it was the closest of close that it could be. Uh, and it was one of those fights where you feel like it could go either way. But watching it back as well, I did think that I had done enough to win the fight. And so did most people that watched the fight, which is why it was so heartbreaking. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to talk to the media because I knew that I was going to cry and I didn't really want to cry, uh, on live national TV, mm. um, or international, wh whoever was there. It was, um, it was really hard, but, uh, yeah, when it's years and years of everything built up to that one moment and it's one person's decision on one three minute round, that was the difference. Um, it's really, really hard to take, but. I, s I got a lot of support, um, I guess, for being so vulnerable and open in that moment, um, which was really nice as well. People were uh, very supportive and um, I think it was good to show that athletes are human as well and they cry and it hurts um, and it just shows how much it, it means to the athletes as well in that moment. Have you allowed yourself to watch that clip ever of you? Have you, have you? Yeah, I've seen it a couple of times. It was going around social media quite a lot right. at the time. I haven't seen it for probably about a year or so, but um, I've watched the fight back a lot. You do? Yeah. Yeah. And and initially, did it take you a while? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You just wanted nothing to do with it? No, <laughs> I didn't watch it for a while. And when you watch it, you think you won? Yeah. The, the woman you lost to, is she a pro? She turned pro as well. Yes, but she's doing Paris as well. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Is there, is there any possibility of you meeting her again, either pro or? I mean, potentially. I'm moving a bit quicker through the pros than she is. Um, I think her main focus is probably more still with the amateur system. I think she's had two, maybe three uh, pro fights, six rounders maybe. Um, I think it could potentially be a big fight that could be built up. Uh, she's a good, skillful southpaw. We box in the same weight division, so... Um, and we could meet in Paris, you right. never know. Uh, I could, if I do go back for Paris, I could potentially change weight classes though. Um, but yeah, I think I would love to do that fight again. I don't know if she would, but I would always be open to that fight. So here's the thing, like even you talking about that fight, like I could see <laughs> the pain, right? Yeah. Um, it still feels very real, it still stings. Mm -hmm. 
how could it remain that way and you not go back to the Olympics? Like, well, do you feel like you will regret it for the rest? Because at this point, this is your last shot at the Olympics. Would you would you agree with that or no? I mean, It'd be another eight years. If the if, I, if the boxing stays in the Olympics, because there's all the yeah. talk about it, not I could easily go for 2028. Right. Um, I'd be 32, which is the age of most of the Olympic gold medalists in female boxing. Okay. Um, so I definitely have time on my side, but I think if I was to do it and then go on to have a successful pro career, I would do it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is that part of the motivation? Like that you feel like you will regret it? Like you have unfinished business? I mean, that's, that's the decision that I need to make. I need to decide, am I happy doing what I'm doing and continuing on this path that, uh, I guess life has led me to, mm. um, or do I go back and, and try and finish unfinished business? It's risk versus reward as, as well. Um, the Olympics is hard. You are fighting the best in the world and you're fighting completely different styles. You're making weight, fighting on the same day. You're fighting day after day. It's very different. It's not one 10 week camp for one particular opponent, um, one style that you're, uh, I guess, studying and, and, and preparing for. It's you have to be prepared for anything and everything. And you you have three three-minute rounds and it's in it's in the hands of the judges. So, mm. yeah, there's it's a lot of weighing up to do. But um, I'm sure I'll I'll make my decision and, and stick with it and be okay with it, which way, way. How depressing was, was Tokyo? Like watching it on TV was pretty <laughs> damn depressing. How depressing was it? Like super strict, right? You couldn't yeah. really, It wasn't really – I'm sure maybe that's part of the motivation too, right? In Paris, Go God for willing, a real Olympic experience. Yeah, you get to do the whole thing. You get to walk out in front of people. You get to compete in front of people, right? Your family probably couldn't be there, I would imagine. Yeah, no. Australia was super – I mean, we would talk to the Australian fighters all the time. What you guys had to go through was insanity. It was insane. Yeah. Um, that definitely would – be part of it as well. I think I think leaving Tokyo and automatically setting that goal for Paris was a bit like that as well. It was um, obviously not the full real Olympic experience. Um, there was literally like fake crowd sounds oh, playing geez. like through the speakers while oh. we were boxing. Like you would just hear random like crowd cheers when nothing's happening in the ring. Oh my God. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I think that would definitely be part of it as well. It was it was a weird experience, and then obviously the the fourteen day hotel quarantine, coming back, uh, not seeing your friends and family, especially after uh, a bit of an emotional roller coaster. How tough was that? Yeah, <laughs> by yourself. Yeah, oh we couldn't gosh. even go with our roommate that we'd been with the whole time. Oh my god! Um, how did you spend the time? So like, how did you pass time? I literally was Instagram living all the time, uh. and. It was actually, it was quite fun. I had fun in there. You did? Um, you I put up, I put up my crazy? like hotel room details and people just sent me Uber Eats. Like, no way. The whole two weeks and I got so fat. Wait a second. You put up your, like your, your, your yeah, room so number Yeah, so it's all like, it was all like police. Yeah. You couldn't get in or out of the hotel. But, so I put up my, my hotel number. Okay, so that's not sketchy to put that up because of the police? Yes. Okay. So, no one was getting in or out of the, the building, so okay. it was quite I guess safe. Because it's the one time that you could put yeah. up the hotel details, right? <laughs> so I put it up, and everyone was just sending me like food. Oh my! Like, God. I was just getting like every time the doorbell dinged, I was like, "Oh my god, I've got another meal!" And so I actually I had quite a lot of fun with it. Okay. Um, yeah, it was it was on it was actually on national news and everything. On <laughs> you were back doing home this? in Australia. Oh my gosh, you probably didn't have to pay for a single meal. I didn't. It was amazing. All right, I guess that's turning the negative yeah. <laughs> into a positive. No, but we got um we got sent like exercise bikes and stuff into the room just to like keep ourselves sane, and um, my family would come and like wave. Oh my! I was God. up on like the twentieth floor and I'd just like wave to my family, but yeah, it was it was a long 14, <laughs> 14 nights. Can we talk about your family? Yeah. Your story is, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a heartbreaking story. Mm -hmm. It's a, an unbelievable story when you first read about it and hear about it. Um, and so for the audience that doesn't know, if, if, if I may, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, you had two brothers, uh, Gavin and Jamie, who passed away a year before you were born, right? Yeah. Uh, in a car accident. Mm -hmm. And Jamie was an incredible boxer, yeah. right? Uh, at the time, the best Australian amateur boxer, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, uh, I mean, I can't even, as, as a parent myself, mm. uh, Gavin was 10. Yeah. I have a 10 year old. Like when you read that, it, it breaks, it breaks your heart. And so I'm so sorry yeah. to, to hear that your family has gone through that. Um, and then amazingly, you're not even born and now you follow down 
and your brother's uh, path and footsteps. And and over time, correct me if I'm wrong, you have been told that you box exactly like him. Yeah. Right? You look exactly like him. Mm -hmm. The crazy thing about the story is you you unfortunately never met your brothers. No. You do have an older brother, correct? Yes. Okay. And he owns the gym that you train at? Yeah, he's a boxing coach. Yeah. He taught me how to box. Incredible. So it's all in the family. And Mm -hmm. and so is it just you two as far as siblings? And my sister. And your sister. Is she a boxer as well? No. Okay. Wants nothing to do with it. (laughs) No. Okay. Um, do you recall when you found out about your brothers? Not really. So I feel like I kind of, I always grew up hearing about my brothers. Um, like I don't remember an exact time where they sat me down. I think it was just like from the get go, you have two brothers that are up in heaven and Jamie and Gavin, and they're, t- they're talked about and celebrated like so often um, in our like family day to day life that no. it was just like normal for me. Um, but yeah, mum mum always said to me like she was so happy when she found out I was a girl because like I would never be compared to Jamie or Gavin or um, expected to box or do the things that the boys did. And um, I ended up just being literally like the two of them meshed into one person. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but the boxing stuff's a bit creepy. Like I never saw footage of Jamie boxing. Um, I started boxing when I was 12 years old and a bit of an awkward southpaw, um, hard to hit, evasive and rely a lot on like my natural reflexes and timing. And I got it literally from my first fight, people coming up to me saying, oh my God, I just watched you box. You are just like him. You, you look like him in the head guard. Like it, it was like watching Jamie again. And I always just thought, oh yeah, like we were both Southpaw, like there's lots of left hand, like left handed people in our family, whatever. And then I was at the Institute of Sport when I was 18, so six years later. And they have like um, a library of footage from like all different Commonwealth Games, Olympic Games. And I found a DVD of um, my brother fighting at the Commonwealth Games. And I was like, oh, my God, I want to watch this. I've never seen it. At that point, you had never seen I'd never seen wow. any footage of him actually boxing. Wow. Yeah. Um, so because he boxed through the 80s and 90s, it yeah. wasn't like there wasn't phones. There wasn't. Right. Um, yeah, so there was phones. You know, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. Social media. Cell phones, yeah. Um, and I put this DVD on and it honestly, like, I kind of like sat back in my chair and was like, it was like watching myself. I couldn't believe it. And I was like, this is what people were saying like all this time. And mum and dad, like they would say it all the time. And I just never thought anything of it. And yeah, it was, it was pretty like surreal to see it. I can't imagine that moment when you were like, you're watching. I was watching it and it honestly felt like I was just watching myself. Wow. He kind of had like long hair. He he, He rocked a bit of a mullet. Okay. And it's like poking out little bits through like the, the headgear and stuff. And I was just like, oh my God. Was that emotional for you? so weird. It was, I had goosebumps and it was just such a strange feeling. I was just like, that, like our style of boxing, like you can't really teach it. It's just something that's so natural. Mm. Um, Yeah. And it was a weird, weird, weird feeling, but um, it was cool though. I feel like boxing's like, I feel like I, I know Jamie so well because I've just like, been on such a similar path to what he was on um, and experienced so many of the things that he experienced. So it's always been like a bit of a, like almost like a comfort blanket for me that like everything that I'm doing, he's been and done and he's like there with me a little bit, um, which is a pretty cool feeling. Mm. By the way, I, I've heard you talk a lot about Jamie. People don't ask you as much about Gavin because Jamie was the boxer. Yeah. But who was Gavin? So Gavin was 10. Um he actually boxed as well. Wow. I think he'd had like seven or eight fights. I actually met someone recently who was Gavin's last fight. As a 10-year-old? Yeah, as a 10-year-old. They fought each other yeah. as 10-year-olds. Incredible. And he was like, yeah, he beat me. I was like, oh, go uh-huh. Gavin. Um, he was apparently very like cheeky, um, kind of boisterous. Uh, he was into like musical theater and um, dancing and... Um, all of that as well. So I actually was very into all of that stuff 
around that age as well. Oh. Before I started boxing, I was into musical theater and dancing and I did all of that stuff as well. So mum always said like I was Gavin through and through and then all of a sudden I was Jamie. Wow. Yeah. That is um, wild. Yeah. So were you the last child that they had? Yes. Okay, so your your sister and brother are older than you. Yeah. And and I mean I can't imagine your poor parents. Mm. H- how did they deal with all of this? <sighs> I mean, I think there's it's not something you can you'll ever get over. Um, they obviously just had to learn to live with uh, the cards they were dealt and they make the most of it. Um, yeah, I couldn't imagine it either. Like what any of my family went through. Obviously my sister was seven. Mm. My brother was 24. Um, and yeah, I've definitely been there when they've been reminiscing on some really, really hard times um, during that period and been so grateful that I was not, I didn't have to experience the loss that the rest of my family have um, because I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine it at all. Like it, it's hard for me and hurts me and I wasn't there. Right, yeah, no. Yeah. Still part of you, your family had seen them. Was was Jamie driving? Yeah, he was oh. driving to boxing training, him and Gavin. Oh man. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a part of your DNA boxing, obviously. And you yeah. said your older brother taught you. Did you get into boxing? Because of him, because of them, like ultimately as a 12 year old, why did you decide to do this? As a 12 year old, um, I was getting a little bit chubby. Okay. I was about to start high school and it was kind of like, mum kind of encouraged me to go in the gym because it was literally in our backyard. Oh. Uh, Yeah. Ring? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You had a ring in your backyard? Yeah, we got a big gym. Wow. Okay. So that's where I did all my boxing. My whole amateur career was in the gym in the backyard. Wow. Is yeah. this like a no excuse to not go to training? <laughs> gym with a rep with a roof? Yeah. Wow. Like a, like a big giant shed. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely had no excuse. Yeah. So mum was like, Yeah, why don't you just go to the gym every now and then and just like get fit? I think she was actually a bit nervous about me going to high school, but it was really good for my confidence, obviously going in the gym as well. And um so I just started going up there just to like punch the bag and whatever. And um, there was a couple of boys around the same age as me starting out at the same time. So they just started, they were learning to box. So I kind of just went through the same training sessions that they were doing every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then they started sparring and doing partner work. So I started doing sparring and partner work. Like I was literally their like sparring partner. And I think it was literally about eight weeks after I first put hand wraps on for the first time. Um, the boys, their names were Connor and Jai. Um, Connor and Jai were um, getting their their medical books done so that they could go for their first weigh-in to have their first fight. As 12-year-olds? As 12-year-olds. Wow. And I was like, well, I'm doing everything they're doing, so I want, I want to weigh in too. Oh, wow. And mum and dad kind of like laughed it off a little bit, but at the same time were like, well, if she wants to do it, like she wants to do it. Um, there's not going to be another 12 year old girl there anyway, so she's not going to get a match. So, right. uh-huh. um, they kind of felt like, oh, well, if it keeps her happy and she's, she's in the gym, she's training, we'll, we'll get her, her, her medical book done. And so we all went to this, this first weigh-in of the year in February, 2008 and another 12 year old girl weighed in. Oh my. And her name was Amy and she was, I think she'd had like five or six fights and I hadn't had a fight, obviously been in the gym eight weeks. Um, but she was like two kilos lighter than me, or like four pounds. And um, my brother, my coach, he was like, you'll be right. She's two kilos lighter than you. She's had five fights, but like, who could they be against? There's like no right. one. And um, I got so nervous, like so, so nervous. Cause I think I kind of went there thinking the same as my mom and dad, like there's not going to be another girl anyway, but I'll be part of the process. I'll go and, I'll go and do it all. Um, but yeah, I had my first fight that night and never looked back. I don't think I've spent more than a couple of weeks out of a boxing gym ever since. Did you win? I won. Wow. How? Points. Okay. Yeah. One on points. Knock around the first minute or something. Most of my 150 fights were on points. Um, we ended up fighting each other 10 times. That same girl? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. What's the record between you two? 7-3 to me. Okay. Nice. I won the last one. 
It's what matters the most. Yes. Uh, no, but because we were the like two of the very like small pool of girls boxing at that time. Right. Um, we'd both show up and we'd both just fight again. And it happened um, over the years. I think the last time we boxed was, it would have been, I was about 17 okay. or 18. Is she still in the game or? No, I don't think so anymore. Okay. I think I might've actually been her last fight okay. when we were around 17, 18. You see a lot of boxers kind of drop off around that age. Okay. Um, but yeah, 10 times we fought each other because uh, there just wasn't many girls around back then. But that's kind of how it all started. And at one point you go like, all right, this is fun. I'm, you know, my brother's mm. coaching me. And now it's like Commonwealth, Olympics. Yeah. Obviously, like at what point does it turn from trying to get fit and have fun to like a serious thing? Yes. Um, so obviously it was just local shows mainly. Um, I went to the nationals and things obviously as a, like in the under 14s, under 15s, under 16s. And then in 2011, so I've been boxing a few years then, um, it was the first ever women's junior world championships in Turkey. Mm. Um, and I got picked for the team for that. So that was kind of my first taste of representing the country, going overseas, boxing against other girls from all around the world. Um, so that was quite a cool and exciting experience for me. Even then, I literally just did it cause I, I, I was having fun and I, I just loved winning. Um, I didn't really take boxing very seriously until I realized the Olympic dream. Okay. That was when it got serious. But I was on rep teams. I went to junior world championships, youth world championships, women's world championships, I think three women's world championships. Um, but yeah, 2012, realized the Olympic dream. Watched Katie Taylor win the Olympic gold medal. That must have been insane for you to be on her card, right? Yeah. Such a big deal. Yeah. Did you get to tell her that? Yeah, wow. I actually, I first met Katie Taylor in Ireland. Um, she was from like a really like close town to where my cousins in Ireland live. And my family, we were over there on holiday. I think I was around 14. Um, and they actually organized to for me to do a, a training session oh, with, wow. with Katie. And somehow, I don't know what happened, but the the time and day and everything got all mixed around and we like showed up in the gym and oh no, no one was there uh, and we were like, heartbreaking. Oh, I know. And they were making all these calls and she was at some sports award winning like sportswoman of the year or something. And she actually came out of the awards ceremony and the, like the awards dinner and came and met me. No way. Yeah. And we got a photo together and everything. Um, and I, like that, I think that was a really special moment for me. Um, and seeing like how, real she was as well like to to go and do that and take her time away from something so important to her to come and meet this kid from the other side of the world um no that was that really stuck by me and then obviously the next time we met was in 2016 so I was 21 okay and we were both lining up for the podium in separate weight divisions um we'd both just got bronze medals at the world championships and I met her again there and got a picture with her there. And then the next time was in New York. Wow. For Taylor Serrano. So quite a cool um, little timeline of following my my idol. Katie is the best. Yeah. She might be like top three favorite athletes of mine. Yeah. She just like everything, like even that story that you just said. Exactly. Just someone that you want your kids to look up to, someone that you can say, I mean, Ireland loves her. They yeah. worship her. I hope she gets to fight and you should be, are you going to be on that card if she fights in Ireland? I'll try. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I hope and so. you have family in Ireland too. I do. Oh I do. Gosh. It would be a really good card to be on. Yes. The rumor is she might be uh, coming to New York. Oh, I don't know. Oh, well, I mean, Serrano's fighting. It would yeah, make sense, it makes sense. Right? Yeah. Um, but that is great to hear that she is who we think she is, right? Yeah, like she is. She would... um, she's a very real, humble down to earth person. Was that part of the motivation to sign with Eddie too, because of what he's done for her pro career? I think, yeah, what he's done with women's boxing in general. Um, because before he signed Katie Taylor and um, did what he's done with her pro career, women's boxing was like very small scale. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't, um, I guess, a lot of motivation for women to turn professional and um, I think Matchroom's done an amazing job of, of growing women's boxing to what it is today. 
By the way, what did your friends think like when you're in high school and stuff and you're boxing and no one else is doing this? Were you an outcast? Did you know they think what? you were super tough, cool? Um, before I started boxing, so I was still in primary school. What is primary school for those that don't oh, know? Elementary. elementary. Elementary, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Language barrier. Primary, secondary, yep. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um I I always loved like playing football and stuff at lunchtime. Like I I loved like playing with the boys and in my last year of elementary school, so I think we're all around age 12. Okay. Um, the boys and girls started being, like, a little bit mean to me, oh. being, like, referring to me as a boy mm. or, like, calling me a boy. And um, I was, like, really embarrassed about that. So I was, like, trying to change who I was and be like more feminine and try and talk more girly and because I had quite like a, a husky voice as well. Okay. And I was like quite shy and embarrassed about it because of the other kids um, at school. And when I started boxing, it was cool with the boys in the boxing gym, but because of that experience I'd had at school, I didn't tell many people about it. So I was boxing on weekends and stuff and I didn't actually – mention it to people at school um, for probably a good year or so. Uh, but as I made good friendship groups at school and stuff, obviously the the friends that I was close to knew I was boxing and they'd actually come and watch me box and stuff. And it eventually started spreading around the school. Um, and it was so different to the experience I'd had in primary school. And uh, the kids thought it was really cool. Um, and... I started having like the older boys in like the next year level up and stuff come and ask me about boxing and and I could see that the people that didn't like it before started to change their minds about it and were like, wow. oh, it's actually cool what she's doing. And it was good though. Like I feel like um, you're so insecure at that age, especially like being a girl, doing a male-dominated sport. It was basically unheard of in 2008, 2009, of girls boxing, especially 13-year-old girls, right. um, to kind of confidently be able to start talking about it and being open about it. And um, like even like to teachers and stuff at school, I would just say, oh, in my chosen sport. That's what I used to say. Wow. I'm, a, I'm doing this in my chosen sport, and I wouldn't actually say what I did. And they wouldn't ask you? I mean, I can't really remember. Okay. But I, was, I remember being embarrassed. Trying about, to hide it, yeah. Yeah, about saying Weird. It. Yeah. That's not a thing anymore, right? No. Like a 12-year-old in Australia now? I mean, I hope Because not. of the likes of you? I really hope, yeah. Right. I hope that um, it's, I think it's much more accepted now. And uh, obviously it's grown so much. The The talent pool's huge now. Um, you see every year, like more and more younger girls coming through and and they're amazing. They're good little boxes. Like, it's exciting. By the way, what did your parents think when you got really serious at this, you know, because of the the history with your brother, um, Jamie, like were they, was it too painful for them? Did they encourage honestly, you? Did they not want you to do it? What did they? They've honestly been so supportive, okay. like from the start. Um, like I'm really grateful that I have parents that are so supportive of like what I chose to do, whether it was what they wanted or didn't want. Um, they saw that it made me happy. They saw that I loved what I was doing and they've always been so supportive. They literally landed in New York tonight. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm really excited. Incredible. I haven't seen them since November. Okay. So I've been in camp in London. Right, because you live in London. Yeah. That's where you train. Yeah. Wow, okay. And, and why not in Australia? Uh, I feel like I found my team in London. I have great access to um, a lot of great female uh, sparring. Um, I'm obviously signed with Matchroom. I'm working on DAZN shows. Uh, so for me, it just makes sense for my career uh, to be based in the UK. Okay. Um, I love Australia, uh, but for right now, I'm exactly where I need to be. Okay. So your older brother isn't your coach anymore? No. Yeah. So he coached me. He's still very much involved. He was in my corner in my last fight back home in Brisbane as well. Okay. But um, he trained me until I was about 18. And then he actually took a coaching job in Papua New Guinea to train their national team. So he was away, like full time, um, training them for the Rio Olympics. He actually was their team coach for the Olympics in Rio. Okay. And um, 
Yeah, so I started training with Wayne Tolton, who's also coming to New York. Um, he was my amateur coach from when I was 18 for the rest of my amateur career. Okay. Yeah. Will your brother be at this fight? My brother's not coming to this fight, oh. no. Um, Sister? No. Why not? I know. Um, they can't be bothered? No, so my sister literally just moved to Dubai. Oh, wow. Like last week. Okay. Um, so they're getting settled there. She's married with three boys. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm excuse. actually going to Dubai on Monday. So I'm going to go see the family. Okay. See all them um, next week, get some sun. Um, and, yeah, my brother's got work and things on. But uh, mum and dad get here tonight. And Wayne, my other amateur boxing coach, Will be here and he's going to come in the corner as well with with my my team from the uk yeah speaking of no sun uh uk not so much here not so much detroit not so much no but you were with alicia baumgartner i was that's that's big i mean coming off her massive win she's a huge star now yeah she's on this card as well what was it like spending a few days with someone at at her level yeah it was amazing um we did some sparring together oh nice uh we have so much fun together we're quite like Geeky. I know it, we don't always come across as like quite geeky, especially her. I feel like she looks so badass until you know her. Right, right, right. But um, no, we always have so much fun. Um, and it was really good working in the gyms in, in Detroit, training with them, seeing how they train, how they do different things. Sparring was an experience. Um, in the UK, I feel like it's a lot friendlier. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> just like not the actual sparring, but like everything that goes with it. Intense. Um, yeah. Okay. It, it felt really intense. Um, it was a it was a new experience, but um, in the UK, like when you show up to sparring, it's like the girls you spar, you're like, hey, how was your weekend? And it's quite chatty. Yeah. Then you get in, you're serious, you do your work, and then you're like, ah, chatting again, let's get a picture, and everything's quite friendly. Um, not quite the same. Here it's like a fight. Experience. <laughs> really? Yeah. You're, um, yeah. You're, you're in there to fight. It's like a war. And Damn. I watched about eight rounds of sparring um, and some of the girls that I was sparring before my first spar. And Ed, my coach, and I would, like, just look at each other every now and then and go be like, this is really intense. Like, the coaching's very vocal. Okay. Um, so in the UK, they don't really say much at all. Um, they stay quite quiet during the rounds and then obviously talk in the breaks. Right. Whereas um, the coaches here were, like, super vocal, super hands-on. It was, yeah, it was an experience, but it was good. Not surprised. Detroit's a tough place. Yeah. You got a sense for it? Like, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's not exactly... Especially where the gym is. Like, yeah. Oh, really? We were in the hood. Okay. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. Okay. It was cool. <laughs> no one usually says the hood and then it was cool all <laughs> right afterwards. No, honestly, it was it was a great experience. Um, I would definitely do more camps there. Uh, obviously, I was only there for the week, but um, I really enjoyed it. It was okay. good. Uh, by the way, I don't know. Are you an MMA fan? Uh, you're friends with Casey O'Neill, right? I am friends with Casey. King Casey. Uh, I am. She's actually immortalized here. Did you see her photo? No. She, her photo is right over there. Oh, really? Yes, because uh, you have to see it. It's a great photo right over there. You see her? No, turn around a little bit more. No, this is right here, right here. Oh. Right here. You see her? Oh, here she is. Because she <laughs> wore my T-shirt to a media day, and I said, if you wear my T-shirt to a UFC media day, you will be immortalized oh. for life. Legend. She's a good gal. She's a legend, but I hear she she's is. a bit of a troublemaker as well when she uh, when she wants to be. What uh, what is your relationship like with Casey? You're, the look you're giving me now is that she's not a troublemaker. I haven't had that experience. Okay, she's, I say this I say this fondly. I yeah. say this, you know, like you don't you don't want to get on her bad side. No, she's cool. Um, we get along really well. Again, kind of like Alicia, like we just have fun. She's gonna text me a thousand percent at some point, being like, <laughs> "Why did you call me a troublemaker?" Um, <laughs> no, she's cool. She's okay. fun. You ever train MMA? No, no, never. Never. It's it's massive in uh, Australia. I know. You know, you know Alex Volkanovsky? I do. Not personally, right? We've met. You have? Yeah. Oh, wow. Where? Yeah. So we were both sponsored by Combat Nutrition. Okay. Um, and both worked with the same nutritionist, uh, Geordie Sullivan, for okay. a while. So, um, yeah, we crossed paths on a, a couple of occasions. He has a um, huge fight in Perth, uh, February 12th. He's going up a weight class. Okay. To fight this He's like Russian. the best in the UFC, right? He is number one pound for pound. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's really cool. Yes. Number one <laughs> pound for pound has never lost. Featherweight champ, Now that's 145. Now he's going up to 55 to fight this unbelievable Dagestani wow. guy. Uh, he is the underdog. There's quite a okay. size difference, mm -hmm. height difference. A lot of people think he's going to lose. What do you think? I think he's going to win. You think he's going to win? 
Now, I love, I, he's one of my favorite people. He's another one like Katie Taylor, right? I mean, just I like say mensch, a, like salt. You know what a mensch means? No. Mensch is a Yiddish term that I like to use a lot. Salt of the earth, like true, yeah. unbelievable human being. Like hasn't changed since the yep. first time I talked to him till now. Comes on the show when it's 6 a.m. in Australia. Doesn't complain, <laughs> you know, because of the time difference. Yeah. He is unbelievable. So I, I'm having a fit. He came on my show last year. He cooked for us. He's a big cooker. So he made uh, chicken wings with us. With <laughs> cool. Takis or techies. I always get it wrong. He's an unbelievable chef. Yeah. He's just an uh, good guy. incredible guy. Good so egg. Yes. Good egg. A yeah. good egg. So I have a, a love for him. Yes. Well, I mean, <laughs> I've never really had a bad experience. I've been to Australia twice. I went to the Ronda Rousey fight when she got okay. knocked out. Were you at yep. that one? No. no. You heard about this, right? I've actually never seen UFC live. Never. No. It's quite the experience. No, I have different. been to some MMA, like small, smaller shows, um, but not not the UFC. So that was at the, um, it was Eddie had, now it's Marvel Stadium in Melbourne. Oh yes, Melbourne, yeah. I say Melbourne, see I'm legit, not Melbourne. Melbourne. Yeah, Melbourne, yeah. right, Melbourne. that's right. Yeah. And then I went to the Acer Arena, which I don't think it's called the Acer in Sydney. Um, okay, so you uh, haven't been to the best city. Which is? Brisbane. Brisbane. Gold Coast, I, Brisbane. That's, that's, that's you, right? That's where you're from? That is a long the ways, Sunshine right? Sunshine State. Yes. But like how far, like how long is a flight from here to Brisbane? I mean, the same as going to Sydney. Is it? Yeah. I always thought it was like Sydney and then you had to take another four hours or something. Or maybe that's Perth. Oh, uh, well, even I further. think, I don't know if you can get a direct flight. You usually can. Before COVID, you could anyway. Okay. If you went New York to Brisbane, it's about the same as Sydney. You could Sydney. do that. Oh, I yeah. didn't know you could do that. All right. That's the best? Why is it the best? Because the beach and everything? It's a beautiful city. Okay. Um, it's the best weather. I'm a little bit biased, obviously. Sure. I have lived there my whole life. Right. But... If you go to Australia, I think you have to go to Brisbane and the Gold Coast. And the fight that you had end of the year? That was Brisbane. Brisbane. And what was yeah. that like? like? That was good. Was it a huge deal? It was a really great experience. I obviously, um, when I signed with Matchroom, I said that I definitely want to fight in Australia as well. Um, boxing has great talent in Australia, but lacks uh, size when it comes to fans. Mm. Um, so... The talent that we do have need to go out. They need to go to the US. They need to go to the UK so that we can like grow our fan base and then bring big fights back to Australia. Because if you're not like a mainstream name, it's really hard to get bums in seats okay. in boxing shows in Australia. But you're doing that. We're doing it. You're on your way. On By the way. way, I've read that you get very, very nervous before your fights and you mentioned this, right? Not anymore. Not anymore. Because no. Did you, but you used to, right? I used Super to. Super nervous. I used to really suffer bad performance anxiety. Okay. Like really, really nervous. And you still kept going though. You would still do it. it I would, would never do it, but you. I would like. Crippling. Yeah. And I actually, I, I lost a few amateur fights because of it on and a so few how occasions. Did you, how did you overcome it? I started seeing a sports psych. Ah. Yeah. When I was like 19 and it changed things for me big time. Um. It started with just like little things like, you know, like becoming present in the moment, like naming things you can see and smell and oh, touch. Wow. And yeah, we started like really like delving deeper into lots of stuff, but it helped so much. Like I don't see a sports psych now, but I like learned things from a couple of different sports psychs over the like couple of years that I was seeing them that I like like tools that I still use now and I barely get nervous at all. Nothing. Nothing. Even I am MSG? like so cool, calm and collected. Wow. Yeah. I'm like singing and what about dancing, Olympics? having a good time. Olympics was the same. Same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's incredible. I honestly like, I really thought I would be nervous at the Olympics because it obviously like everything had led up to that moment. And I don't know if it was because there was like no crowds and stuff as well, but I remember actually walking out to the ring and being like, this is so weird. Why aren't I nervous? Mm. I, I almost was like nervous for not being nervous. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. Like I was like a bit worried that I was too relaxed. But I think that's when I boxed my best anyway. Okay. Yeah. So this weekend, mm -hmm. Hulu Theater, Tanya Alvarez. Yes. Seven and one. Seven and oh. Seven and oh. Yes. I, th I thought I saw Someone's O has to go. Someone's O has to go. And it's for the prestigious WBC Silver Featherweight title. Yes. Uh, at the Hulu Theater. Mm -hmm. Very cool place. Um, you tweeted, you're, you were thinking you needed some suggestions for a walkout song. Yeah. 
Well, first you said walkout, and then I think you got some weird responses. Yeah. To, but then you <laughs> had to correct it with song you were looking for. Have yeah. you picked the song? No. You still haven't? No. Oh, I've, my gosh. I'm, so the people that have watched my first five fights, I've come out to the same song. Which was? Uh, in Excess, New Sensation. Oh, that's a fun yeah. one. Yeah, so fun. New Sensation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But people started saying, like, you're not going to be a new sensation forever and you can't be, like, a pound for pound great still being a new sensation. Sure. Do you know what I mean? We still have a few more to go before we get there now. Yeah, like, I feel like I'm still a new sensation. Sure. So at the moment, I'm still a little bit on the fence if I stay a new sensation. It's treated you well. But then it gets to the point where it's like, oh, do I change it now? It's worked for me all this time. And you start having, like, superstitions, like you have to come out to that song. I don't like superstitions. You don't? Got rid of them. Bad. Bad oh. idea. Don't have them. Really? Yeah. I'm all about superstitions. Oh. I still have my same Twitter profile pic from the moment I signed up for Twitter because <laughs> like, I'm afraid to change it. I think my whole life is going to go to shit if I change it. <laughs> so I'm not the one to ask. My initial like reaction was, don't change it. Yeah. But don't listen to me because I'm, I'm crippled with superstition. It, it has yeah. ruled my life. First of all, you're still a new-ish sensation. Mm -hmm. You're not even 30 yet. You're not even close to 30 yet. No. Second of all, like we have great fighters like Uriah Faber, great fighter. His nickname, California Kid. The guy is over 40. He's still <laughs> the freaking California Kid. Who says you have to okay. change these things? Yeah, that's true. You know true. what I mean? If you like it, if it puts you in a good place, mm. if it makes you happy, comfortable, at ease, it's treated you well. Yeah. If it ain't broke. That's what I say. Unless you feel like you need to change, you want yeah. this and that. I don't know. How 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 far are we from you being in the pound for pound discussion in your mind? I mean, I want to fight for a world title this year. This year, okay. And Serrano and Cruz are fighting for undisputed in my weight division oh my. on this card this weekend. So obviously my eyes set on the winner. You and think you think winner next? I mean, not immediately okay, next, all right. but I, I mean, I'll have to get myself into a mandatory position. I can't just say, hey, I'm ready. Right. Put me in, coach. Why not? Um, I mean, I would. Yes. But there's a process. Right. Um, but obviously, whoever's got the belts at 126 in the next cup, like in the next few months, in the next six months, um, that's who I'll be coming for. Okay. So my first world title fight could be for Undisputed against Serrano or Cruz. Wow. Um, and you think you're ready for that level? I know I am. Okay. Wow. The look you just gave me was like, how dare you even question? I was just, it was not that I didn't believe it. It's just, you know, some people might think, ah, oh, three or more. Four. No, I, I think um, my team will give me the right fights between now and that that fight. Um, if it's Serrano, whoever it is. Um, but I think my team also know my capabilities and I've been sparring and training with world champions, um, heavier world champions, lighter world champions, and I know I'm ready. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That is quite the promo. Thank I like you. promos. Um, as a pro wrestling guy, you got to sell the fight. Right? <laughs> it's important. Uh, last thing before we let you go. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, darts are a huge part of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm a big darts fan. I have noticed your tweets about the darts. I tweet a lot about darts you these do. days. Uh, and Eddie is a big darts guy. His family yes. pretty much built their empire on the darts. They did. So we've become huge darts fans here. Mm -hmm. I even watch it on DAZN. Like I'm, I'm watching random events now. That's how much I like <laughs> it. It's very strange. I got one in my house for my kids, but it's like the the magnetic ones. Love that. So, you know. Safe. I, I don't want them to be. You Responsible know, parents. Yes, Good. exactly. So we're very into it. In fact, Eddie's mm -hmm. going to be here on Wednesday in your okay, chair in cool. studio. I have a lot of questions about the darts. Some people think that I can take over darts here in America and do a bit of a better job than he did. We'll get to that on Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Thing is, we have put up a darts board here in this studio and we're starting a new thing. Look at the look of the <laughs> <laughs> where it has to be three versus three, okay? Three shots. Okay. Me, three shots you. And we're going to keep a running tally of all the people who join us in studio. Okay. So Eddie would be next okay. to see. And are you familiar with darts, like the rules? Okay, it's very, I'll, I'll teach you as we go. <laughs> uh, it's, it's very simple. All you have to do is shoot three. Okay. You've done that before, surely, in your life. You've never thrown a dart in your life. Do I get a practice run? 
we'll let you have a practice run. By the way, I don't really off air. I'm practice. no, it, we're live. We're live. Uh, so okay. this is something that we're gonna. And I know you're very competitive. I am. I've heard That's you say I don't, if I don't, you're not good at something, you don't do it. Yeah. Right. I yes, don't. I've heard you say that. Um, but you are you are first up, and uh, wow. unfortunately, now it's become a thing. You probably. You know, we could have given you the heads up, but there's no fun in heads up, right? That's okay. So do you feel mentally ready to do this? All I have to do is shoot three. I will shoot three, and then we'll see who gets more points. Okay. Uh, do you want to do a practice of three? No. You, you want to go straight into it? I'm ready for the challenge. Really? Yeah. Are you nervous? Yeah. Okay. Do <laughs> I, don't, I don't get nervous. One extra. One, like one, one okay. practice? You want to do yeah. one? All right. I think that's fair. If you want to do think, three, we'll do three. I think one practice. One practice. Okay. All right, here we go. It's right over there. We're going to do this on the way out. Myself versus Sky Nicholson. Maybe the one athletic thing that I could probably <laughs> maybe beat you at. Uh, we're going to do it right over here. These are the three. What a setup this is, right? Amazing. Okay. I'm really nervous. Are you really nervous? Yeah, I'm more nervous for this than my fight or any fight. I think you're letting me on. Yes, Paul, Paul an English. I'm sweating. <laughs> I thought you don't get nervous anymore. <sighs> okay, don't get nervous. Uh, this is the line right here. Right. By the way. Six shoes. Thank you. And uh, I saw the orange uh, nails, too. Yeah, I go all out. You're all out. All right, here we go. I'm good here, Joe. I feel like I'm not even going to hit the board. By the way, look at this set. We have this setup right here for you if you oh, want great. to see. Oh, great. Okay. It's right there. This is this is like the darts, is it not, Paul? Yeah. This is like wow. the PDC. All right, so uh, there's the board. It's it's uh, preferable if you hit the board, not Okay, the I'll wall. try. Uh, take I can't make any promises lefty, here. Which is super, I am super an, interesting. I yes. am an awkward lefty. Yeah, no, listen. Do your thing. Southport things. No pressure. This is a practice one. All right. Do you, like, use your whole arm, or oh, is yes. it more of, like, I, a, I should, you know what? a flick of the wrist? It's funny that you say that. Okay. We had uh, Michael Smith, bully boy, who just won uh, the whole damn thing a couple of weeks ago. He said, lean in, mm -hmm. don't bend your knees, which was something that I did. Okay. And he also said, follow through. All right. So he said, throw it. Oh. That's a bad one. Okay. But he said, that was that looked pretty good to me. Well, it was pretty low. <laughs> he said, follow through. Make sure to follow through and lean in there. Okay. So here you go. Here's your practice. All Scott right. Nicholson, the undefeated. Don't bend soon the Soon to be champion. Practice. Okay, that was a phenomenal shot. Look at this, we have the screen here, but I just wanna make sure. Okay, so right now that is a 19. Uh, if you would have gotten it here, it would have been a times three, but it's a t this would have been a times two. That's still an incredible shot. Okay. All right? So you're in a good spot. Thank this you. This is times three, so this what is am times I on? two. Or was that my practice? That was your practice, unless you wanna keep it. We no. might need to keep it. That might have been my my best and only shot that hit right. the Th this board. Is, now it counts, now it counts. All right. See, I think you're underselling your skills here. All right, Here I we say go. so. I don't know one. if you saw my uh, strike on my bowling on my Instagram story last week. I'm a woman of many talents. Okay, oh. not bad. Damn it. Uh, that is a 19 again. All right. Okay. Shot is a 19. Right. You seem to like that spot yeah. on the board. Higher. Getting some coaching. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. Wait a second. That's in the the that's, little bit. Yes, that is a that is an 18. That's a multiplier. That's 18 times three. 18 times three is what, Joe? 18, 36. What is That's it? so hard. 54? <laughs> My brain. Okay, 54 plus 19. So 54 plus 19 would be 73. Holy shit. Oh, oh my, my goodness. See, I don't believe you for a second. You got a 20 very close to the bullseye right here, and then you got a 20. So you got a 93. Thank you. Is that good? That is tremendous. So the best you can get, I believe, is 180. I'm no expert. I'm not going to get What did I get? You got a 93. Oh, Are you I was okay? Like, yeah. I was, okay, here we I go. was really nervous. You're going to kick my ass. I'm not going to get anywhere near a 93. That is a 13. All right, that's, that's a good start. What's that? Frank? Got this, come on. Okay, thank you for the encouragement, <laughs> Frank. I appreciate you very much. Here you go. Oh! Uh, 18, pl oh geez. 18 plus 13 is what? Is uh, 31? Oh, you need a big one here. I don't even know if it's, po actually it is possible. <clears throat> if I get the 60, if I get the 60, I beat you. Here we go. All right. Oh, off the board! You hear them laughing? Those yeah. bastards! Off the board! I got a freaking thirteen, a thirty-one. You beat me. Not only did you beat me, Sky, you kicked my ass. Well done. Thank you. There she is, Sky. We're we're gonna Born look at winner. this camera right here. Sky Nicholson, this Saturday on the zone. <laughs>
Hulu Theater, soon to be WBC Silver Featherweight Champ. Six and O. Check her out.